on you right now. Uh, Darla, go ahead and do an introduction. Tell us who you are. Go ahead and do that. Well, I'm Darla Daywald, and I'm the National Director for Patriot Action Network, which is patriotaction.net, and I've been involved in the Tea Party and the Constitutional Conservative uh, Movement mm -hmm. since uh, the end of 2008, and uh, I'm happy to be here and talk with you. Okay. Um, we want to talk about what's going on in Arizona. I mean, you, I, Arizona is now another red state, and I have a question. What's the difference between your your the new governor and Jane Brewer now? Because you 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 mentioned about uh you know talking about Jane Brewer about t SB ten seventy, and I didn't know about uh that she was kind of a, a like a Rhino Republican. I did not know that she was at she was at uh, um uh you know like John Banner is too with the Republican Party. How how far left these people right, really right. are. So you definitely want to expose that. Go ahead. A lot of people, a lot of people think that Jan Brewer is kind of a conservative rock star, yeah. and she didn't get that uh, by her own doing necessarily. What happened is back when SB 1070 was written, uh, that was that was uh, really pushed to the front by our at the time state senator <clears throat> Russell Pierce. Mm -hmm. Russell Pierce, along with the man in Kansas, wrote the SB 1070, and when it got approved in the in the state legislature, then it went to Jan Brewer to sign. It sat on her desk for three weeks. She wow. would not sign it. She did not want to sign it. And they kept pushing her and pushing her, and finally she signed it reluctantly. Now, when she signed it, yes, there were people that came out against her and against our state and boycotted our state. But beyond that, conservatives all across the country just came out in droves and thought of her as just the most amazing uh, governor. And not only that, she has collected millions of dollars since because of that. She's been on Fox News numerous times, right. other networks, and so she, she's really gotten famous by the SB 1070, which really was none of her own doing. Ah. Other than the fact that she, she finally signed it. Ah, so that was, so that was, that, so that was, this is, uh, that was all, that, that's all that was all about then, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, she she didn't really want to do it, but once she did, then it was like, oh, well, now I have this fame, and then people started asking her to come and speak and all of those things. But the truth is, she is very pragmatic. As a matter of fact, this last uh, session in our state legislature earlier this year, she, or actually last year, I'm sorry, uh, uh, last year, this actually has occurred, <clears throat> she pushed uh, several of our Republicans, turned out 14 of them went with her on this, and 100 percent of the Democrats into voting for Obamacare, uh, Medicaid expansion in our state. Now, this is the same governor who stood on the tarmac with her finger in the face of Obama and telling him that we weren't going to take Obamacare and all of this. We were one of the first states to say that we weren't going to pass Obamacare in our state. Right, and he did and it. She, she, she turned around and she pushed it and got 14 of our state legislators, um, Republicans, to break ranks with the GOP, and they voted for it in our state, <clears throat> and they pushed it through. And then on top of that, this year, during the mid, uh, the primary elections, many of us went up against her and some of those legislators. I even ran for office against uh, two of the guys in my district that voted with her. And she came out with a ton of money for them, a lot of signs, and a lot of the plaques came out for them. And not one of the 14 were unseated, not one. Wow. Wow. That's, so it, she, she, calls them, she calls them pragmatic Republicans. She wants to work <clears> with <throat> the pragmatic Republicans. You and I would call them rhino Republicans. Right. Well, no, we, what we are, uh, Darla, what we are, we are uh, cons uh, constitutionalist conservative Republicans. This is what we are. Yeah. Constitutionalist conservative right. co conservative Republicans. Right. And did you? Well, I got to hear this on Monday, or was it? Yeah, it was on Monday. Uh, believe it or not, I talked with uh, the the campaign manager of um, uh, uh, not not Rick Scott, but uh, Scott Walker, Wisconsin. Did you know he's a black? He's a black. Democrat. 
registered Democrat returned Republican. And I said, sir, you're not a Democrat to me. What you are, you are a patriot. You are a patriot. He goes, oh, really? He goes, I, he goes, here I am. I'm, a, I'm, I'm supporting Scott Walker. I work with him. And, you know, he, he uh, and he's, he's given me a job I would not normally have otherwise to, to do what I'm doing. And I said, Sir, what you're doing is far, far greater than any other cause, any other liberal cause out there right now. You're doing something that even the um, the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, ACLU or NAACP cannot do, and I appreciate that. And I spent over an hour with a guy on the phone with him on Monday. On Monday, a black a, a black Democrat. And here he is. He's his press secretary working for Scott Walker. There you go. Well, and, and I just love how the left wants to portray the conservatives as being horrible, racist, yeah. bigoted people. And the truth is that so far from it, the truth is that's who they are. You know, when I was a kid, my mom would say, when you point your finger at someone else, you've got, your, you've got three fingers pointing back at you. And the truth is that, that that's what they are. They, yeah. They're really talking about themselves, but they're trying to defer the attention from what they really are to us. And, you know, that's what evil does. That's what bad people do. They don't want to take responsibility for who they really are. 